the Harvard Graduate School of Education, working at the nexus of practice, policy, and research. Well, it was done in conjunction with, with my thesis, and the, uh, the title of the film was called A Blind Teacher in a Public School. A Blind Teacher in a Public School. And uh, the idea was to show in a very visual way that the broadest audience as possible that uh, public school teaching is a viable life choice and option for, for blind people. And when I was a junior in high school, 16 years old, I was going to a public school. I had a counselor come down and tell my parents that if David was uh, continued along very well in school and graduated from high school, it's a vocation, uh, the commission could arrange it so I could get a fruit stand in the subway as, as my lifetime profession, that I could sell fruit for the rest of my, uh, the rest of my life beneath the streets of Boston. I never mentioned a word about college, never mentioned a word about anything else. Alan's here? Yeah. Okay. Ruth, Sarah's here, I know. Yeah. Dave deals with the problem very openly. He's different, and um, they talk about it. And I think that that does more. I think that it, it does more for seventh graders than almost anything else. Um, Knowing that you can be different, um, that you can talk about it, that it's all right. Who, who makes your breakfast and, and the other meals? I do, unless I can con somebody into cooking for me. I know, I do all my own cooking. What's the story? Just some... Um, about yeah. a, a bull that just doesn't want to fight. He just wants to be quiet and smell flowers under a cold tree. Himself. Right. He wants to be himself. And he doesn't mind being by himself. He doesn't call that lonely. Okay. So that's what the story is about. Okay. Did you see the difference, sir? Yeah. Mr. Kirby. Yes. What do you mean about the illustrations? What should I write? Okay. Them? Now, do the illustrations, do they tell the story? Or do they make clearer what the it words makes, are saying? It makes right? it clear. Okay, they, they make the word, they explain the words for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Some books, the illustrations can tell the story. So I just write down the illustrations to help explain the story? Exactly. Is that right. all? Right, that's all you have to do there. Oh. Notice where they're put. Now, it's going to be hard to notice where the illustrations are put when you have the children's book here closed. Mm -hmm. Open it up and look at it. Every day coming back from school, I took a shortcut to knock all the way around. Every day coming back from school, I took a shortcut to what? Every day I took a shortcut to not go all the way around. You see to me? not go all the way around? Yeah. Well, that's what a shortcut is anyways. Do you think we need that in the sentence? No, well, if you took a shortcut, you're not going all the way around. So that's what yeah, kind of repeating go. what a shortcut is. So why don't you just say, every day coming home from school, I took a shortcut. Okay. Period. I think Tiki, because he had real difficulties in learning himself, uh, understands that. And I think that's one of the reasons kids in the school find him so appealing as a person. Put the words out. I can handle teaching in the classroom. However, the one aspect of teaching that is physically impossible for me is the correction of papers. In order for me to correct my papers, I rely upon a group of volunteer readers who work with me very closely. Okay, uh, let's put a comment on this. Say, uh, Andy, your paper is very well written. Uh, the first few sentences are very descriptive. No. Okay, my... you had detention a few times? Yeah. Once I've had to talk to you a few times, and I know I'm not the only teacher that's had to, right? Yeah. So where can you improve? Well, uh, like in my getting along with the kids, or, or well, just both as... Well, Where can you improve with the subjects? My study habits. I have to stress the sense of community, because for me, that's important. I have to have the feeling of us, that it's not just I and the teacher, they are the students. I want the feeling that it's us, and we are in this together. Like, you would think that, you know, he wouldn't have too much control or anything, but, like, really, he does. 
hey, don't be a jerk. I mean, because he's not dumb. He really knows what's going on. Like, if you think you're going to come to class late and get away with it, you're crazy. Uh, if you think I'm too gum, he'll smell it quicker than any other teacher could see you. I mean, like, but Mr. Tiki, he shows us how to appreciate people for what they are and not the way they look or whatever. And he really can say, like, you should appreciate your eyes. I mean, it's something you need. And he says, I don't have them, but I still do good without them, you know. The greatest way to have reached the uh, largest population would be to be on TV and have a film that's both entertaining and educative. So that's where uh, I had the idea of doing the film and worked with that particular film worked with a producer named Henry Felt. It was a lot of fun. In 1974, 37 states responding to a study identified 272 blind people teaching in the public schools. This film was produced under the auspices of the Graduate School of Education, Harvard University.